When we gathered in church for the first Sunday of 2020, none of us could have guessed at the strange year we were about to have, could we? The changes that we've experienced to so much that we took for granted have been immense. Who would have thought that a pandemic would sweep across the globe? Who would have imagined that phrases like COVID and lockdown and live stream and track and trace and social distancing would have become daily additions to our lexicon? Who could have imagined that the immense changes would take place to our shopping habits, our entertainment practices and habits, our family gatherings, our school openings, our work patterns and our worship? There has been so much that was truly awful about last year. My heart goes out to those who have lost loved ones either directly to the coronavirus or because of the knock-on effect of the virus on our normal medical services. And of course, to those who have not been able to mark the passing of their loved one as they might have wished. My heart goes out to those who've been trapped in care homes, confused and lonely, and for their families who have been desperate but unable to provide relief. My heart goes out to the overworked, stressed out staff of our hospitals and clinics, to teachers and other frontline workers who have found this year intolerable. It truly has been an annus horribilis for many. But there's been much about the last year that we can also give thanks for. For some, the change of pace has been welcomed as has the cessation of the daily commute into work. Others have found time to write that book or take up that hobby that they always dreamed of. For some, there has been time to read, to walk, to spend quality time with less people, but in greater depth. Some have discovered new things, including, for many in our congregation, the ability to be able to worship from home. For some, there has been an opportunity to reconnect to the church of their youth, thanks to live streaming. So 2020 has been a mixed bag, hasn't it? There have been some truly terrible happenings, but also many things for which we can give thanks. And this should not surprise people of faith. God has a way of leading us into new experiences, often unexpected experiences, which may test us, perplex us, or delight us. But each of them has within them the potential for us to grow. And that was certainly the case for the wise men from the East whose arrival in Bethlehem sometime after the birth of Christ is remembered today. As they set off on their journey from the east, they could not have known what was going to befall them. They had ancient texts and a fascination with astrology to guide them, but they really had no idea where their journey would lead them. Some vague promises in the skies about a king coming to Jerusalem. There was delight in their journey, no doubt. Not least is eventually when they found the Christ in his mother's arms, as we shall enable our models of them to do in a few minutes. But there was terror and trouble too. Not least when they had to flee the danger of Herod, and no doubt later to hear about the terrible slaughter of the innocent children of Bethlehem. Trouble and delight, pain and pleasure, two sides of the coin of life, a life which Jesus came to share with us. Jesus was revealed to the whole world through those Eastern wise men, which is what the word epiphany means, the revealing. But he then went on to experience all the joy and pain of human life. He knew the love of family and friends, the thrill of sharing love, both with massive crowds and with individual seekers. 
but he also knew the pain of betrayal and denial, the agony of humiliation, execution and death. But in each of these experiences, there were things to learn and ways to grow for Jesus and for us. For the wise men, their surprising and revealing journey was transformative. We know nothing else about them from the pages of the Bible, but church history and tradition tell us that their encounter with the infant Christ led them to becoming the first evangelists to the world beyond Judea. They are said to have taken news of the arrival of the Christ back to the land of the East. And according to some traditions, they were all martyred for their faith. Certainly none of them would have known uh, that a lifetime of evangelism followed by a martyr's death was to be the outcome of their original journey when they set off in search of a newborn king. We too cannot know the outcome of our collective journey in 2020 and of course into 2021. Our long Covid journey has not yet finished, although we can perhaps begin to see the finish line on the horizon with the good news of a vaccine. But what will we have learned at the end of the journey? In what ways will God have been at work among us through these long pandemic days? As a nation, I hope we will have learned some important things, such as the vital necessity of investing in our frontline services so that they have the capacity to respond to sudden challenges and not be overwhelmed by them. I hope we will have learned that homelessness is not always inevitable and that it is ultimately a society's choice to let people sleep in shop doorways. I hope that the army of people who have been mobilised to support the lonely and bring food to the hungry will continue to find ways to love their neighbour. I hope that the reduction in climate change emissions that we've achieved by learning to work from home, for example, will continue. And there is much more besides that we can learn. But what about us as a congregation, as a, as a family of God here in the centre of Havant? What about each of us as individuals? What have we learned? How have we grown? Well, the answer to that question will be different for each of us. But I encourage you at the turn of this year to take some time today to ponder the question, what has God said to you about how to live differently in the coming year? In what parts of your life have you been challenged or reshaped by God during this pandemic? What changes have you already made to the pattern of your life which you feel called to sustain into the future. For just as God led the wise men across mountains and deserts to experience profound change in their lives, you can be sure he's doing the same to you. Be open to the journey and open to the change. Listen to God's voice and God's prompting for your life. And rejoice with me that new days are coming and that God continues to lead us on. Amen.